Yum, yum. Hey, everybody. Uh, I wanted to show a little progress on the master rigging effort. Um, I said I was done kind of doing the prototypes, and that is true. So now I'm building the real rigs. Uh, and I kind of wanted to show some of the stuff that I'm, uh, what I'm coming up with. It's kind of cool. Okay, so Moto has this concept of an assembly preset. Um, it allows you to save. It's basically like like mini scenes, self-contained little scenes that go into the, their little preset browser. That's what it looks like here. So here are my little assembly presets that I've been, I've been building as I've been crafting this rig. Um, what's nice about these guys is that it gives you the ability to, you know, make little components and then load them in and reuse them. Um, in your rig over and over, which is kind of nice. Um, they're not live connections, so it's not like if I make a change to one, it's going to cascade up. Uh, but it really does make it easier to say, all right, I'm crafting this rig. I'm going to take this component and that component and, and build them up. Because something like the lid rig, which, of course, this doesn't look like an eyelid, but I'm just testing, um, you end up with a lot of the same things over and over again internally, like three rotations or three translations. Um, so a rotation in the X, that's what this guy is here, right? Rotation X, rotation Y. Um, and then for both lids, I'm, I'm building a, <clears throat> a list of or a, a series of fall-offs that all blend together, right? So I can get an in, a mid, and an out. So that, that system of fall-offs that are all lined up and are, are designed to um, mathematically match up so when you pull one across, the, the different lengths play and all, I don't really need to build that over and over again, even though I'm going to use it over and over again in the rig. So I built a preset for that. And then the five zones is for the lips, right? There's five zones there versus three. So I just kind of, you know, increased the, the number of rotation nodes and everything else. And then you can go in with these systems and I'll, I'll dig in and I'll show you and kind of set up for additional behaviors later. So you can have outputs. So assembly has an input and an output. Actually, let's just show this because it's actually really fun. So let's go into something. Um, and actually, so this, this is my lids rig root and then it's got in here i've got my left lid rig i go into here now i've got my fall off right so i've got an invert node that inverts the placement so that means i can go and move the left side and well, actually this is my right screen left um so if i move the left the right will move along with it if i turn it and rotate it they'll do opposite so that i can fit the one side of the face and it automatically will be fit on the right but there are controls to add asymmetry too. So if I take the right, I can offset it after the fact if he had like one eye that was different shape than the other. But anyway, so then let's go and say to the up lid rig and then I go in here and now we can see that we've got, here's my three rotations, right? So three RX, three RY, three RZ. And these are just little icons I made in Photoshop. Um, and so this is a system there. If I double click and go into here, now here's kind of my base system. So I've got my inputs and outputs listed right here. So these are my inputs. And what I've done is I said, hey, I'm gonna take these, the influences here. I've got an effector and a fall off and geometry input for each one. And I'm gonna assign them as inputs into this assembly. Now, when I go up, I can see that these show up so that I can wire in this weight container inside of the lid rig into my little subcomponents and do that one at a time and not have to have a separate container in there and then wire it up. It basically, it simplifies the process. It allows me to build these little chunks with no weighting information and then take the one weight container in another assembly and just kind of wire them up. Um, and then for output, I've got these channels here. So what I did was I said, all right, my input channels in mid and out here are gonna drive the deformation of these effectors here uh, they'll go into the influences, and then they will deform the mesh uh, when I add points to the weight container on the other side. Um, but I also want to be able to define a positive value and a negative value so that I can drive my shape corrections. So here I've done the work to um, bring all of the values out, normalize them so that I get a, a value of, um, when I go to a value of 100, I'm going to get a 100% or 1 output. If I go to negative 100, I will get a one output for it, but it'll go to the negative output here. So that means when I move something in the positive direction, I get a value that will drive a correction. If it goes in the negative direction, then the negative channel will give me a value I can use for that correction. And then this, they show up like this. So when I'm ready to put in all the shape correction rigging, I will just make new assembly presets for those, drop them in, and connect them up. So then we kind of work our way back up, right? So this is the upper lid, 
right? And I go up. Now I've got my up lid, my low lid, and my upper lower lid. I call the up low lid. I'm super creative there. <laughs> so, you know, with that, that's the whole like moving the lid as a whole, moving everything around, right? So I did that as well as the, the corners and, and everything. And uh, also, one thing that's important is that if you take something and you flip it to the right um, and move it around so that it mirrors your left, that means that when you do something like a rotation in the X, it's actually opposite, right? So if you go positive and you open the lid on one side, if you didn't have a way to change or invert that value, if you put it into there the same way, then the lid would close, right? So now I've got all these different channels here for inverting and everything. And what's nice is as I go up, and now I've got my left, my you know, my left, my left lid and my right lid, and it's all worked out, and it's all into this one. I go in and I set up all the inversion bits, right? Set them up so that when you load the lid rig as a fitting TD, and that what's sort of how I call it. But this is master rigging, right? I am building the system that needs to be in place for you to then apply shapes and actually apply the rig, or apply the the rig to the character. Um, so the, this is master rigging, and I'm going to teach how to both master rig, build these rigs up from scratch, as well as just fit the rigs, which means take this thing as a system, not having to worry about any of this complexity, and just fit it. And the way you kind of avoid the complexity is to go into these little helper setups. So let's say I want to do the fitting. So I made a workspace. This workspace shows me all I need for fitting this rig. So let's, let's just take a look at that real quick. Um, and I won't keep you guys too long. But so now if I want to, I can take this guy here and I can move the whole system up and down, right? This is me moving everything up and down. Now if I want to take the left rig, I can move this up. And as I rotate it, you'll see that it's automatically going to invert and go into the right place. So if I had a character that eyes were bent or whatever, you know, I could, I could do that. Um, then if I wanted to, I could say, well, I want my right rig to have a little asymmetry and do something slightly different. It allows me to do that. And then if I want to, I can move the carve um, control. That's these guys, right? The actual, not, not what's deforming, but what's dividing or cutting up the weighting, which is the different waves. Same thing, right? Where I can move one after another. And if I want, I can then um, have add or introduce asymmetry on top of it. And then I can grab any of these guys, right? And if I move them and adjust where they are, you'll see that the right and the left are in sync. So it's, it allows me, as a fitting TD, to not have to think about anything. I was like, oh, I got a new character. I'm going to double click, bring the, the human rig in, or whatever rig it is. I'm going to go to the eyelids. I'm going to put them in the right place. So I'm going to set them up, and I'm going to do that. Um, the other part is, um, is I'm, calling it, I'm calling them scale factors. But what this means is that if you design your character right, if you design your rig right, actually, is more importantly to say, um, I want to be able to say that when I mung the eyelid open, I want open to equal 100. So that means I'm going to try to separate the actual value, like rotation of, say, 20 degrees, and abstract that so that when it's 100, it equals 20 degrees in this rig, and that gives me open. By doing that intelligently throughout the rig, I can create a system where the animation that I do for one character can be easily copied and applied to another because 100 will be the same thing, relatively speaking, for all characters. It's got a big nose, a gigantic mouth, a little eyes, or vice versa, big eyes, small nose, huge mouth, won't matter because 100 means the same thing, relatively speaking. That means you can build entire libraries of animation and reuse them. But to be able to do that, you have to have a way of scaling the input value to match what you want the actual deformation to do. Again, I've abstracted all this. So the fitting TD just needs to go into these factors, and there's not that many. You know, it's like here are the different, and actually the, these are a little bit different there, but well, there's like, what, nine channels, 12 channels? It's like, okay, I, I will set that to 100, and then I will tweak the scale factor till the lid's exactly where I expect it to be, and then you're done. Um, and as long as you do that and you start doing, you have some test animations, everything tunes, you've got a whole library of these characters doing all kinds of cool stuff and not have to worry about it anymore. So anyway, that's that. And then now if we want to wait it, I've got a little, uh, another workspace here, which shows all the weight containers. So here's all you need to do. You wait these guys here, right? And you'll have a working lid rig.
And honestly, you could get away with just doing the upper and the lower lid for the left side and then just copy, mirror, and paste them over to the right. And I'm gonna try to build some scripts for that so that you can just mirror stuff really quickly. Um, but even if I don't get that done for the first version of uh, the first part of RMC3, because I'm gonna keep updating that over the next several months, um, uh, it's not hard to do. It's super easy to copy, paste, and invert the, those things. So anyway, basically flood two weight object or weight containers, make them look right, and then boom, you've got everything working. Fit, weight, and start animating, baby. That's all you got to do. So anyway, that's I think that's all I, I need to show. I don't actually need to show this thing working. Um, but uh, yeah, and here are the animation controls. And yeah, fun times with rigging. So anyway, assembly presets. Making progress, this is the lid rig. Um, I actually have built, I put the whole rig together messily, um, and now I'm working my way through with those lessons learned to build all these presets um, and get them in place. So yeah, when the, when the RMC ships, you are going to get a complete human rig. You're gonna be able to get all these little subcomponents, and I'm gonna teach you how to both build and deploy them. So anyway, you guys have a good night.